My name is Sarah Walker Betcher. I am a content strategist and I actually work independently now after many years at an agency. Um, what I work on a lot is helping organizations figure out how they can get content that's going to be more flexible and can be used in more places. Because what I'm finding is that as people are starting to realize that they really have to deal with mobile and they have to deal with content that's going to be available on different channels and platforms, they realize that they're, they're kind of locked in. Um, all their content sits on pages and those pages aren't, aren't really prepared to um, go to different platforms. So I think that that's something that's really interesting because a lot, you know, a lot of people at first when mobile started really picking up, a lot of people were saying that, you know, it's like, oh, well, mobile users wouldn't want this or mobile users only want to do these two or three top tasks. And, and I think that sometimes that might be true. Um, but I think a lot of the time people are expecting, you know, increasingly so to be able to access whatever content they need from a mobile device. And so I tend to believe that, um, generally speaking, um, especially for sort of a content-rich site, um, anything where, where content is sort of a, a primary focus, it makes sense to include all of the content, um, but just make sure that the experience is designed in a way that makes it easy to access that information, you know, based on the device you're on. I, I know there's some people who will get into sort of this app versus mobile site debate, and I try to sort of avoid that because I think that apps have, pur I mean, I use apps all the time, and they have a purpose, um, but typically that purpose only makes sense when it's, you know, when I, if I download an app, you can have some understanding of what my intent is as a user. And so therefore you can kind of limit and rein in what's available in that app because it has some implications that I'm intending only to get maybe a certain subset of information, which is a little bit of a different use case than somebody who's coming to, um, just coming to a site and you'd really have a very difficult time saying that they would only want this or that because they're on mobile. So I've been talking to people lately who've been asking me questions about responsive content. And I try not to frame it in that way because I tend to think of the experience as being more responsive and the content as just flexing and flowing to fit how that's gonna respond. Giving it structure, it's what's going to make it more flexible. When you have content that's organized, it's just everything's just a generic page and everything's in just one big lump. It's really difficult to build priorities and relationships and rules about how that content is going to shift. So all you have is everything's a big lump. Well, it can be a big wide lump on a wide screen. It can be a really long skinny lump on a skinny screen and that's about it. But when you're able to take content and take a look at what the different pieces and chunks are that make it whole, then you can have rules built in as screen size narrows or widens that those different chunks do different things. And so that really comes back to understanding sort of what you have and why it's important and then breaking it down accordingly. And I think that that's gonna be one of the really big challenges as um, more and more sites are going responsive that need to, s at, at a larger scale. If you're talking about a really small site, like a personal portfolio, you've seen some beautiful examples of responsive sites that are that are for you know individuals or that are little. And then you can kind of afford to make every decision manually. You can say, as you're building it, you can say, okay, I want this to happen here. I want this to happen there. When you get to really big sites, and as you get to things you know, like higher ed or government, and you're dealing with thousands and thousands and thousands of pages of stuff, you're not gonna be able to make all those decisions individually, so you're gonna have to think about different content types and what, for each, what needs to happen for each of those content types to retain its meaning. It's really easy to publish information. And, and you know, the, I mean, the, the modern web is, makes it very easy to get information online very quickly, but if you're not really clear on what you're trying to communicate and what you're putting out there and why, who it's serving is your audience and also how it's serving your organizational goals, then on the on one hand, you're wasting a lot of time because you're producing things that you may or may not need, that may or may not be doing anything for you. And that's inefficient and that costs a lot of money because producing content is expensive. And then on the other side of that, you're missing opportunities to engage with your audience in ways that are gonna make sense for them because you haven't really thought about what they want. So content strategy really ultimately is all about just understanding, I mean, it's, it's you know, it's understanding what users want, it's understanding um, what your organization needs, and it's making sure that you have a sustainable plan for actually creating that. Um, and I think the sustainable part sometimes it falls off too. It's about making sure it's content that can be governed and maintained over time, and content that's going to continue working for you long after launch.